Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. We're going to change gears and we're going to talk to a Bronx guy who's an artist. And I just found out he actually lives in my neighborhood, really a stone's throw from my window right now. But uh, all that aside, uh, say hello to Charlie Elo, um, a, a multimedia artist uh, from the Bronx. Nice to have you with us, Charlie. Pleasure to be here, Gary. Um, tell me a little bit about your artwork when you got started, what inspires you, what kind of work you like to do in general. And then we'll show, I was talking about earlier that we're going to show some uh, mass transit work, but let's just talk in general about where you've been. Uh, okay. I was uh, raised in the Bronx, um, educated uh, mostly in the Bronx. I went to uh, LaGuardia High School down in Manhattan. I've always had a passion for, for artwork. Um, I just recently graduated from uh, Lehman College uh, in a, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in, um, in studio art. Uh, so I, I've been painting professionally for about seven years now, painting at live art events and then uh, commissions and murals and, and things like that. Um, I'm multidisciplined, uh, photography, a uh, little film, the videography, uh, graphic art, um, and uh, yeah. So, well, well, so, so let me ask you, what, what motivates you? What, what, I, I'm always interested in, the, in an artist's muse. What motivates you to do all that work? And then what made you say, well, you know, painting's not enough or photography is not enough. I want to do all different kinds of things. Talk, talk to me about what's inside you that, that drives that. Well, um, to be honest, it's, it's probably an insatiable and inexplicable feeling, uh, that that an artist i mean i can speak for myself that an artist like myself just has i just have to i don't know express myself um i i like to consider myself somewhat of a storyteller and and art is is the you know is the telling of our times or of whatever time that it was created um even back back in the day before we had photography uh you know we look back to those images to know what was going on during those times so um documenting i guess uh, uh, our current situation or my life as i as i as i walk through it um a form of expression and and the reason that i'm a multidisciplinary is because sometimes you know i'm not in the mood to paint or perhaps <laughs> I, might be, I might not be in the position to paint uh so you know we jump off to uh to something else like photography or, or creative writing or videography is uh is something that I, i've actually spent a lot of time doing Especially um, nowadays when the opportunities in videography, I mean, you, you know, you can have your cell phone and all this. I mean, you could be on TV, you could make a video of literally anything nowadays. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I guess so, a sort of a, a different medium for a different time or, or a different form of expression. I also, you know, would call well, and, and aside from the fact that we are down the block from each other, you know, there is this uh, that I have this feeling of. There are stories out here, especially in the Bronx, that nobody's telling. It's like still <laughs> been here for a hundred years, undiscovered territory. And um, it's it for me, and um, you know, doing what I do, it it drives me every day. This a guy like Charlie Elo has got to got people got to know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I agree with you. I actually um, I I was able to have the blessing of be of, of exhibiting in the longwood uh, art gallery in in hostels college last year during the pandemic they did a virtual exhibit um and the painting one of the paintings that they um that they showed uh was actually on the cover of a bronx magazine called bronx narrative so i just wanted to like, kind of like shout that out there's somebody else who's uh telling those stories and pushing art culture we in, we uh, know the people we know the people from Bronx narratives very very well and um, you know they do great work. There's a lot of us in the Bronx that are, yeah. are motivated um, certainly in that way. I'm just curious. One question, then we're going to show some of your stuff. Um, do, do you make a living uh, and, and able to pay your bills through artwork, or do you have to have a so-called straight job? Because it's always an interesting questions for artists um, and how they survive. Because it, sometimes it's inconceivable to me, and I have so much respect for people who do. But just tell me about that. Well, it depends on what time of year, I suppose. Uh, you know, summertime is always good uh, for murals and outside work. Um, uh, I as of right now, I have to take a part-time job right. um, to, to make, uh, to make ends meet. Well, we got to pay our rent and these are tough times. For right. Sure. But I'm, I'm still making a living off art. I, I'm still, right. uh, you know, um, 
able to pay my bills on uh, partly on my my art salary. Uh, yeah. I'm just recipient of a grant just recently. I'm curating an art show down in um, down in Manhattan in October. So uh, you know things like that uh, help you keep keep you going. Awesome. All right, let let let's take a look at the Mass Transit series. Yeah. Um, the the first picture that we have, which I I just love, I love all of them. Um, you know, now that I know that you're from my neighborhood, I feel like is this the 238th Street station? <laughs> <laughs> this um well this uh this painting is based on a reference from i, I believe it was in brooklyn uh, uh -huh. but what but what took me about the the actual image was exactly what you just said it's so reminiscent of of those train stations that i grew up um you know standing on so uh you know, i really tell really me really about it. tell me about the painting of it um you you um uh, is it large is it a, a small i mean uh, what's that it about that particular painting, uh, I believe, is uh, eighteen by twenty-four. So not not that not that large. Maybe, like, did did you did you do it on location, or did you like take a photograph and then do it for, or from memory and do it that no, way? No, that actually it was a photograph that I saw online from one of my wow. friends, a friend of mine's photograph, and um, I got her permission and I went ahead and. Uh, Great. You know, I, I I love that because it's so iconic for um, the borough of the Bronx. Let's let's uh, see what the next one uh, looks like. Now this, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of things I like about it. Number one, um, it's modern people, but it's sure the train looks like it used to look like when uh, <laughs> when we used to ride the D train many years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this piece um, is actually a uh, a tribute to my art collective, Art Culture NYC. I'm a part of a of an art collective of, of uh, artists based out of New York City of all Latin American descent and um, uh, all the people in that uh, in that picture are in the collective, and that's supposed to be a uh, uh, self-portrait of me over in the corner sleeping. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Um, uh, do, does that give you do, do the portraits like that of Bronx people, even doing something of yourself, give you the most pleasure, or all of it gives you the most pleasure? <laughs> like whatever. I, it's like like a musician, the latest work is my favorite work. Well, I. Again, it, it depends on, on on what day you ask me because I uh, particularly like painting the mass transit series because of the the originally because of the interlacing of culture right uh, in, in the subway system and um, how we're from all walks of life and all boroughs and and places and we're just trying to get to work we're trying to get to where we're going and we're all together forced to just interact. In, in a the, very small space in a very small right. space and on a daily basis on a routine and um you know that was interesting to me beyond that though uh if you see you know some of the paintings have figures some of the paintings don't i um wanted to then explore perhaps the space that we occupying so maybe not the people in it but maybe the space that that we were occupying well, let, let, let's take a look i want to make sure we get the, some more of these in there yeah speaking so, of space yeah. And, and the fact that you made it pink and red uh, is interesting to me. The red this trains uh, uh, are, are a, a later thing than they were years ago. Um, yeah. th this is this is what it looks like rush hour. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> you, the you that I was that. referring to uh, Bronx narratives, and that I that I was able to uh, to exhibit at the Longwood Gallery. It's it's oh. actually a favorite uh, of, of of the mass transit series. People seem to gravitate towards it. Um, but yeah, that definitely. Uh, is 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 a perfect example of um of what I wanted to express. I I look at that painting when I look back at it, it almost looks like blood cells, you know, going through like like wow. the veins, right? That that are the tunnels that that go through our city, which is the body of our of our city. Uh, and the red trains actually are meant to represent the Bronx because as a youth, I used to hang out over on the east side. Uh, in the '90s, the red train was the two train that used to take you up to uh you know uh 241st and and up up on those sides so um so i put that red that red train to me specifically uh, I, I i want to show some more stuff um yeah. and, and let's let's take a look speaking of red um where just tell us something about it i mean it's okay it's uh, impressionistic but you get the feeling of movement that's for sure movement right this is actually based on a uh on a curve if you're coming down uh the one train um, and you leave the Bronx and uh, one of the first train uh, stations in Manhattan and is uh, the 207 right. station. Right. right. And and it comes very close to that building. And I've always been fascinated with the fact that there's a moving train, uh, you know, just taking that corner. Um, 
And so, you know, there it is. There it is. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see the next one. Oh, now this is slightly different. I love this because it combines, of course, the mural, the background, and um, uh, the uh, uh, the street. Uh, obviously, we recognize the streetscape with the, with the the gratings and all. Tell me about this. Uh, this is a project that I did with uh, the Women's Health Education Company out of the Bronx. Their uh, their their organization doing great things in the Bronx, and um, that was uh, meant to just promote um, anti littering and. Um, that was a very heavily graffitied uh, fence before, you know, um, we, we got to it. The community participated and um, we were able to, you know, beautify it a little bit. Um, a lot of people in the neighborhood really appreciated it. I got a lot of responses uh, online. On, on, and on and, and let, let's face it, when, let's face it, when you do murals like that, it changes the neighborhood, changes yeah. people's look at the neighborhood, changes how they feel. Um, now, did you do that yourself or did you have other people assist? Because sometimes some people get other people to assist um well i did it you could say i did about 90 percent of it myself there were people from the community um helping out because it's supposed to be a they, they always yeah they always but, want to I, I i don't mean to rush you along but i yeah. want to get how people can find you how they can see more of your work certainly if they want to commission you we wouldn't uh, argue with that um yeah. how do they get in touch with you how do they find out more okay oh uh you can check out my website it's uh elevated media at uh, elevatedmedia.com, e l o v a t e d media.com, or um, on Instagram, l o burns e l o b u r n z, l o burns with a z at the end. Um, or you can or Google or, it. You can or Google it and they'll take you right to my uh, to my hands. Or, or you can just uh, take a walk down the block and have a slice with me and uh, Charlie, uh, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> and we we'll do it the Bronx way. Uh, listen, uh, Charlie Elo, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your great work. We appreciate your vision of, of our beautiful borough of the Bronx. And um, that's going to do it for the Bronx Buzz. Thanks to the editor-in-chief of City and State New York. Um, and that is, of course, um, uh, Ralph Ortega. Thanks to Charlie Elo. Thanks to you. And guess what? We'll see you next week.